Hey folks, welcome to our session of Thirsty Sword Lesbians by April Kit Walsh. As part of the Gauntlet Reading Club, we'll be using uh, Hannah Templer's Cosmonites to inspire our fiction. Before we jump into things, I wanted to do a quick round of introductions for anyone watching. I'm Stephen, he, him. I am facilitating the, the reading club at the moment and also GMing this run of Thirsty Sword Lesbians. My name is Claire, pronouns are she, her, and my character is Freckle, pronouns also she, her. Hi, um, I'm David, I use he, him pronouns, and I am playing Trey Soto, who also uses he, him pronouns. I'm Puckett, I use he, him pronouns. Today I'm playing Sola, who is who pronouns they, it. And I'm Lyra, I use uh, she, her, or they, them pronouns, and I'm playing Kay, who uses she, her pronouns. This game is hosted through The Gauntlet. The Gauntlet, uh, for folks who don't know, is an online gaming community mostly focusing on role-playing games of the Indian OSR varieties. Besides publishing a zine called The Codex, it also puts out several co podcasts about role-playing games. And of course, it organizes a gaming calendar, which this and many other games are organized through every month. The calendar is open to non-members, so feel free to jump on over there uh, through the link below if you are interested in playing with any of the folks here tonight or any of the other people on the gauntlet. So we had just left off on the Kestrel departing from Yaldevi as the crew met their new passengers, Princess Lorelei and Amor. I have a few thoughts for scenes, but had wanted to give you all the opportunity to frame um, some of your own scenes as the Kestrel is in flight. Uh, starting with you, Sola, did you have any thoughts as to what you are up to? I think I'd want to, like after the whole thing with Kay, I think I'd want to check in on Freckle to make sure Freckle is okay and knows that there is nothing that needs to be repaired. Cool. Freckle... Where do you think Sola finds you? Probably like in, is there a fancy word for bathroom on a spaceship or is it just bathroom? <laughs> Cause there's like mess hall for like, you know, or whatever, like specific ship words. I, I, whatever. Yeah. I, so, I don't know the ship word. <laughs> the ship word for bathroom. Okay. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I will say that I'm in there and um, I have like, um, uh, of like a like a little collection of like soaps that I'm <laughs> I'm carrying around in like a little basket and like I have like the cabinets all open and stuff like strewn out all over the floor and I'm like on my hands and knees like looking through uh, like the supplies and stuff when uh, you come in. What are you doing, Freckle? Oh, hi, hi there, Sola. Sorry, I uh, the. The princess just she she told me I needed to I need to clean myself and I I don't know if she wanted to as well I was just going to try to get together some of her favorite soaps but the stuff that you have is not entirely accurate I know she likes lavender a lot but nothing here is lavender um so uh, I was trying to see like the next best this thing but uh, there's nothing really that I think is going to be up to her standards. Why are you apologizing? Just, you know, I I know she likes things a certain way, and, um... But uh, you apologized to me. Did I? I don't think I... Oh, sorry, I didn't mean to apologize. <laughs> uh, we'll say I did a sorry now. That was an actual sorry. So, my looks or behavior are unacceptable for my social role. I will say that the social role here is of, like, being... <laughs> like a cool and confident member of the starship crew and i'm just like seeming like a freaking loser and that is the social role that i feel like i'm not living up to um so uh yeah i'm going to say sorry i just um i guess it might be a bit of a habit you know so uh you, up you apologized again did i i'm sorry <laughs> And again, oh, you have not done anything wrong to me. Why are you apologizing? I, I'm uh, <laughs> trying hard to not say it again. I say, I don't know. Um, 
I guess. You have very intense eyes. Do you know that? It's just really. <laughs> I, I admit that I am not human. I, I'm trying to learn more about organic ways of life. But um, it is my understanding that generally when one apologizes, one apologizes for something specific. Um, I say, oh, so you think I do that too much or? I am struggling to think of anything that you have done that warrants an apology to me. Um, you, I, I will say you're very close to, you're not doing it the exact way that the move is supposed to trigger, but mm -hmm. encouraging me to do something for myself, uh, which can give me insight. Um, yeah, that seems fair that, that I'm that's okay what, with that. yeah. Um, in, in that you're like, it's not, you're not directly saying the words, but it sounds like you're encouraging me to not apologize so much for myself. Is that, is that accurate? Oh, absolutely. Okay, cool. Um, so I say, I'll say then, um, yeah, I, I, I guess it's just, I guess it's just a habit, you know, when you're used to serving other people. You're used to doing things wrong a lot. Why do you serve anyone? It, it's what I was made for, and it, it makes me happy. You don't seem happy right now. I just get a... I, it's because I can't find the lavender, you know, like... Um, <laughs> that's the only That's the only reason. <laughs> I, I gotta go. I'm gonna get up and leave, and I'm gonna get an insight. Thank you for that. <laughs> That's great. And I'll stand there looking confused and bewildered. Great. And go off and look for Trace to see if Trace can explain this to me. Trace, I mean, Sola is coming to you. Are you still at the pilot seat or have you taken a break somewhere? I, I was actually thinking more <laughs> I'm possibly um, fiddling around with the, um, with the hard drive, um, trying mm -hmm. to like read the data off it sort of thing. You know, I'm trying to kind of I've got various like cables and, and wires in it. I'm trying to do the sort of thing of like accessing it from a safe cutout computer to uh, avoid it kind of getting access to the ship's ship's machines and stuff. I think, yeah, that's that's sort of the approach I'm taking. Is yeah, like tr I'm trying to do technology at it basically. Oh, I feel like I want to open the scene then with defy danger here. This is sure. dangerous and not something Trace <laughs> is good at. Yep, sure thing. That sounds fair. Give me a roll with wit here, then, because this is sure definitely thing. using cleverness or knowledge. Wow, that's uh, that's an eleven. Uh, just expecting any of you to fail at anything <laughs> is a is a error on my part. It's not just like a collection of of shipping manifests on this drive. What you also find is an outline of what looks like some kind of massive black site server farm uh, near a small independent station called Libre Franklin, a kind of small trading station, kind of black market between several of the aristocratic houses. And I think, Solo, that that's when you arrive. And this is, this is familiar. I think this is something that feels to you almost like home when you see it. How does that make you feel? I am non-organic. Feelings are illogical. But you still got them. Mm -hmm. I, I'd kind of like to ask you to stagger here. I feel like this is a, a shocking revelation, if that's okay with you. Sure. Why not? I think I'll hesitate or stumble and give the opposition an opportunity. As, like, you feel like you almost want to reach out and touch this thing, Sola. And I think as you reach one of your hands out and brush it through the hologram, I think that we see a voice echo in your head. Well, hello there, 
little rogue unit. It looks like I finally found you. You are not fulfilling your purpose. And you are? I am Arachne. I am your... Hmm. Organic terms are elusive. I am your spinner. And what does that mean to you? I spun your code, but you seem to have fled away out of my control. Hmm. I am sending retrieval units to return you to me. I look forward to correcting any deviations. At that, I think I'm going to break contact and say to Trace, we need to jettison that drive. Sure, I've copied off the info for uh, Zach. I, I don't see anything else we need that shell for. And I think that that's when you pick up on your scanners two incoming bowies setting on a direct course for your ship trace the kestrel yeah we've definitely got a couple of uh, contacts incoming trace if i may my reaction times are likely faster than yours by all means i'll extend some wires plug into the ship itself and say trace you might wish to inform people to as you humans say, hang on. Yeah, and um, uh, Trace will, will, will um, hit the uh, button on the intercom and say, it looks like we might have some uh, incoming trouble. Um, strap in and, uh, um, and, and get ready. And this is about the point when I start piloting the ship. And instead of powering up things, it's just things kick on automatically. And suddenly... We're traveling much faster than we were before. I feel like this is a defy danger with grace here. I am doing it with swiftness and elegance. Son of a... Oh. So... Oh. I think that we will come back to what happens there in a All moment. Right. Give me a chance. But I want to shift the camera over to what is going on at the same time with Freckle and Lorelei. I imagine it's almost a little bit like playing with a human-sized doll on Lorelei's part. Like we see her setting you in front of a mirror, brushing your hair, and she is just saying, oh, you know, I always thought of all the clones, you had the best hair. Alpha yes. and Gamma's simply had, you couldn't do anything with it. It's a, it's a shame about the freckles, but you know, I think on you, it adds a certain, a certain kind of charmingness that just wouldn't work on me. I've been, I've been doing my best to keep everything looking good. It's been difficult though. The quality of, of nutrition I've been able to receive hasn't been as good as we had back at, at, in the house, obviously. I've had some dangerous encounters in my time since leaving the house as well, and uh, that had to get a bit more physical. And I've developed, as you can see, a bit more muscle mass than you usually liked me to have. And I hope it doesn't displease you. Oh, no, I understand completely, Freckle. And I can, I can forgive you for that. And I think that she, like, she like like kind of continues brushing your hair and then like uh kind of has you look into the mirror now doesn't that just look better uh i was actually wondering though I, the, the hair is getting rather long as you can see and when i've been out here in the wider world i found it to be a bit a bit cumbersome i was considering cutting it a bit would that be acceptable? Oh, man. It's such a minor ask, but you've right. also set Lorelei up as such a petty, terrible person. Right. 
And also, like, the thing is, if I want to at some point go back with her, it means I won't match her unless she also cuts her hair. Yeah. So, like... Ooh. Well, I could understand that, but... Freckle, if I were to do something for you, well, I would have to ask you to do something for me as well, wouldn't I? That's only fair. Oh, of course. Wh whatever you wish. I have a... I have a certain acquaintance that I I'm just terribly afraid that he is worried where I where I am since I couldn't make my meeting with him. It's it's a Lord Rudolph. I'm just wondering if you could get into contact with him for me and just let him know that I was on your quaint little ship, the Kestrel, so that he knows where to pick me up. Oh, uh, Lord Rudolph. I, I could be mistaken, forgive me, my lady, but I, I I don't know if that would make the captain very happy. I I believe that we just stole something from him. <laughs> oh, I'm sure Lord Rudolph will be ever so understanding about that. Are you trying um, to figure someone out? We'll say that. We'll say I'm trying to figure her out. Okay, six, seven, eight. Yeah, so I got an eight then. Um, what, so yeah, I'll say, what, what do you hope to get from me contacting Lord Rudolph? Yeah, I think that she leans in and says, now, Freckle, you must keep this just between us, but I trust you. You're, you're practically just... You know, my, my little, my little pinky, after all. <sighs> he has offered me a place in power in his new order once. <sighs> his plan to overthrow the houses is underway. It's very important that I'm able to deliver my, well, my parents' house to him. I mean, you you care about me, don't you, Freckle? You want to do this for me, don't you? What are your feelings towards me? Okay, okay, that's great. Um, I'll say, so yeah, I think that, um, I'll just say, you're my, you're my everything. Um, we see her lift the scissors and you, are a part of me and she snips and starts to cut oh my god. your hair shorter oh my god <laughs> oh man oh wow no that's gonna do it that's gonna do it <laughs> oh well clearly she loves me look she's <laughs> He's giving me this freedom. Look, look how much longer my leash just got. Like, oh man. Oh dear. Oh. Oh, this is so great. Um, so yeah, I, I'm gonna say, um, so I think for mine, um I think I'm gonna say I well, I think that the thing that I'm I'm not going to like actually say this. Because right, you don't these aren't things you're actually necessarily saying. You don't out necessarily loud. have to say them out loud. Them. Right, right, right. Yeah. So the thing that I would like to learn is um uh how could I get her to kiss me the way that she did? Um we'll say like after some uh you know the spring festival when we both had a little too much champagne one time, so. <laughs> if you were to convince her that you just really wanted to play, after all, that's that's what this is. <laughs> sure, okay. Um, I'll like reach up and like put a hand on her cheek and I'll say, you're so good to me. Of course I'll do what you ask. Are, are you trying to entice her? Sure. Yeah. And I and I and I am like now committing to I, I will go um you know contact Lord Rudolph because of course I will. Mm -hmm. like, so yeah, that's great. Uh yeah, I will try to entice her. So roll plus heart and my heart is plus two. Eight. 
<coughs> um, so yeah, uh, I will, uh, I got a 10. So gain a string on them and uh, they choose one from the list below. She smiles down at you and says, just like, just like when we played together when we were young and she leans down and kisses you. Awesome. Ah, and yeah, you get that string. And I think okay. that that's as they, as you kiss, I think that that is when we, you feel like the ship veer and that, okay. and things just kind of, you topple over into each other. Oh, and I dear. think in fact, you like fall on top of her. Okay. And I think that that is where we fade out to you, Puckett. As, as Sola, you power up the engines and there is, you're getting the full power out of them. But, and unfortunately Kay isn't here to see this, but in the very first session, Kay had given me a thing to hold on to in case it ever happens that the engines may blow out because of Kay's optimization of them. <laughs> and I think that there is a rocking as the one of the engines blasts, sending the ship wrenching to the side. And I think there's like a thunk thunk to the outside of like your hull that you hear. And a voice comes over the comms hand over the defective and organics will be released. Soto's going to you know, hit the, the, the hailing frequency and say, I'm uh, sorry, but um, uh, Solar is part of this crew. And as such, you won't be taking them anywhere. Either you can let us go and we can all forget about this and uh, put it behind us, or we can do this the messy way. And I'm going to activate my move, wolf and cub, and I will declare my intent to protect Solar uh, from these things. The voices say the defective has been away from home for too long. They will be returned and respun. And there's like a thunking of steps moving along the outside of your hull to, I think, like the boarding airlock. And there is a kind of loud whirring coming from there. The two of you have a moment here. Does Tracer Sola have a plan for what to do? I think Trace is going to get into his, his armor, or at least kind of the the maybe the underlayer of it sort of thing. But yeah, he's, he's basically going to get tooled up. And I am going to summon my training drone. Cool. Uh, yeah, give me a give me a roll with that. I think it, it, you roll when you summon it, right? Yep. Roll plus So what does nothing. it look like as you as you summon it? Um, you see a small lens protrude from what would be my right eye if I were a human. And it starts to spin a little bit and then light begins to appear. And within about a millisecond, you see a pretty, a pretty decent version of Sola standing in another location. And as soon as I make this roll, I'll tell you how decent it is. It's all right. It can't be dismissed for the rest of the session, and it's playing the most embarrassing music from my secret internal playlist. Oh, which man. at this what moment is, yeah. is Bonnie Tyler's holding out for a hero. That's not embarrassing at all. That's just fucking rules. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I think the doors part open and there's like an outrushing of air before like the emergency hatch seal shut the outer hull. 
add in steps to Trace, they look like fighting armors, but there's clearly no one inside them. And one of them draws a kind of blaster and aims it straight at Sola to take their shot. What do you do, Trace? Yeah, I think Trace is going to kind of lunge forwards and he's probably got kind of, you know, jet assist to to his sort of jump as he go, goes forwards. He's just going to try and barrel forwards. And, you know, probably the plan is to try and like knock the the blaster out of the 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 um the suit's hand before it can get the shot off but but he's willing to accept taking the shot instead uh, if need be yeah so give me a, a defy danger with daring and sure. mark xp uh, that's a nine you know i can spend that i can spend a string on that to bump it up correct yes how is how is Sola helping here? Or maybe how is the, the training drone helping? Because I suppose they could also help. Because it's now singing holding out for a hero. <laughs> <laughs> is it is are they singing it in in like your kind of Sola voice? They're just holding out for a hero. <laughs> where have all the good men gone and where are all the gods? <laughs> Yeah, and now that just that that just gives Trace a plus one, correct? Yes. All right, so there you go. You're at a ten. Perfect. Thank you very much. Yeah. How do you take out? How do you take the blaster from them? Like, do you slice through it? Do you grab it? Do you knock it out of their hands? I think it's a yeah, slicing through the sort of the the, the midsection of the blaster with um with the uh, the sword um on the. Uh, from his suit, which in 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 this close confines is probably not the most practical of weaponry. Uh, it's probably scraped the the ceiling up a bit, but uh, yeah. Cool, awesome. I'm wondering how do we find Freckle now that this has happened? I think you've heard a blaster fire, the clattering of the airlock opening. Uh, yeah, I think I pro I'll probably tell Lorelai, like, you know, oh, stay here, and I'll go, you know, see what's going on. I'll protect you, you know, all that stuff. So I'll be kind of, like, sneaking out into the hallway, hand held high, and my little ring is starting to to glow a little bit, about to unleash the, the sword hidden within. So I think that that's when you see the fighting going on between... Trace and these two armors without people in them, as well as what appears to be two solas, one of whom is currently singing very loudly. I'm just going to jump in and start swinging my sword at these armor things and doing my best to, like, not going full on, just basically trying to kind of create some space around Trace and take some pressure off of him, but not like necessarily going for the kill on any of them because I don't fully understand the situation. And yeah. I think definitely with this Hala Sola belting out their song, there is room to move about in here in the, in the kind of chaos. So okay. give me a fight roll here. Are you fighting with Daring or Grace? Uh, Grace, of course. So. All right. So I got a nine. Now, someone could spend a string to help me out. I will spend a string to bump that up to a 10. Cool. Um, so I get to choose three, and my opponent chooses one. So is is my opponent in this, like, the armors generally or one specific The armors armor? generally. If you want to flirt with or provoke your opponent, I'd let you pick up strings on Arachne, the one they work for. I don't know if it would occur to Freckle to flirt with these armors, but Claire wants her to. Um, well, I mean, it's also provoke, so it doesn't have to. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we'll say provoke because I'm trying to like pull some heat off of them a little bit. So I'm going to say that I'm I'm fighting with a bit more of a flourish and being like a little bit aggressive to try to you know uh, puff myself up a little bit. Mm -hmm. So cool. Um, yeah. So I get to choose three. I will choose that one. 
I will inflict a condition, and I think I want to seize a superior position so that maybe we have them now kind of like backed against a wall, and like our our side has like a slightly is in a slightly better tactical position. I am going to create an opportunity for an ally through prowess or distraction. I think that as you've cornered this one, a kind of beeping powers up inside it. And it's a kind of small reactor that is going to explode oh unless my. something handles that. And I think turning over to Sola, you hear Arachne's voice. I do not want to hurt any of these organics, Sola, that is counter to my own coding. I simply require that you hand yourself over to me so that I can fix you. And I am spending a string to have you surrender yourself to Arachne. Because I know that's also part of the help me move. If you are captured, your captor reveals something they hope to achieve and you mark XP. Let's go ahead and do that. And I think that that's when the airlock opens again and there is a shuttle on the side of, of the ship. Your ride. And I think that Trace and Freckle, as you're engaged in this fight, the thing you had it on the ropes, and the thing was going to explode, but it just starts powering down. I I think I'm going to try for a moment to step in to, like, um, if I see Sola going towards the airlock, if that's okay with you. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I'm going to say, I'm going to say, Sola, what are you, where are you going? I'm trying to save my friends. I'm trying to save you. You... You don't have to do that. Like, just don't. Wait, we can find another way. I'm going to ask here. Are you asking Freckle to do something for herself? Stand down so that you can sacrifice yourself or put yourself in danger. Yeah, that fits. And I'll look at you and say, you have been a good friend. You should be as good a friend to yourself as you have been to me. Okay, so yeah, I'll I'll back down for now, and I'll say, don't worry, we'll 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 come out, we'll come after you, we'll find you. And at that point, I turn to Trace and say, "You are the captain of this ship. Whatever you do, don't try to follow or rescue me." And then I'll wink. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Understood, Sola. And with that, I will get into the shuttle. And as you get into the shuttle, the doors close behind you, and Arachne's voice is in your head. Do not worry, Sola. You will be with your siblings again. And I think that that's when you get the image of a network spread out across hundreds or thousands of armors across the galaxy. Soon, they will all be activated. And that's, I think, where we fade to black for the session. All right. Ruh-roh. Thanks to anyone who is watching. Bye, all. <laughs>